Hi, and welcome back to the third section of this course about advanced artificial neural networks. This section will be divided in four different videos. In the first one, we will understand the basic ideas about the learning process behind every deep learning model that will be essential to explore more complex solutions we will see in future videos. Then, in the second video, we will introduce the core concepts about optimization and one of the most used algorithms in deep learning called stochastic gradient descent. In the third video, we will learn with more details how to actually use stochastic gradient descent for learning the weights of our deep learning models through backpropagation. Finally, in the last video, we will learn the process of automatically tuning the hyperparameters and how to implement it in R using the H2O package. So let's move to the first video of this section about the learning process. In this video, we will firstly motivate why learning in neural networks can be seen as an optimization process. Then we will define more precisely with respect of what we have done in the previous videos, what the score function and the loss function are. And in the end, we will learn how to design the loss function along with the regularization term according to the task at hand. First of all, what do we mean by learning? We mean being able to generalize from previous experiences and improve the performances on the same task based on a given measure. More specifically, uh, in the context of machine learning, it means adjusting the parameters of the model in order to accurately predict dependent variables on new input data. Now, to formalize the concept better, we need to define two main functions. The score function, f of data, which describe our mapping from the input space x to the output space y, and the loss function j of data, which measures uh, the quality of a particular set of parameters based on how well the induced scores uh, using f of data agreed with the ground through labels in the training data, which means how well our model can behave on the training set. Having chosen the score function and the loss function, we just need to adjust the weights in order to minimize the loss function. So we can initialize the weights randomly, and then we can use the best optimization algorithm available to solve the problem. As for the choice of the loss function, many different loss functions can be designed to solve the same problem, and one can be better than the other depending on the task. An example of the loss function for the regression problem could be the classical mean square error loss, so that for each data point in our training set, we take the square difference between the actual label, YOI, and the output of the score function. Then we normalize uh, their sum by the actual number of data points n, and we get a good esteem of how well our model can predict the data points in our training set. The mean square error can be used also for classification problems, where if, for example, we have just two classes, like in this case in the image on the right, each YOI is a vector of two elements, where the right class has a value of 1 and the other class is of minus 1. Other common loss functions are the cross-entropy loss function and the hinge loss function. In the first case, the outputs uh, of the network are interpreted as log probabilities, while in the hinge loss function we try to maximize directly the margin between the two classes. In the previous section we have also seen how to prevent overfitting using regularization terms. Remember to always add them to the loss function, of course, if your R package isn't already doing that for you. So, continuing our example with the MSE-based loss function, using the L2 regularization, uh, remember, 
we just need to add to the loss function designed before the regularization term here as the sum of all the squared weights. Very easy, isn't it?